Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to use a Easy Light Plus electrolyte analyzer from Medica. And we're going to be turning it on, showing you how to do the quality control, the calibration, and then how to run a blood serum or plasma sample. So when you are working with a biohazard like blood, you need to make sure that you are protecting yourself from that biohazard. So you need to be wearing shoes that are closed so that there is no exposure of your feet. You need to be wearing pants that uh, prevent any exposure of your legs. You should be wearing some sort of lab coat that protects most of the rest of your body. Then you need to be wearing gloves that protect you from anything that's gonna get spilled on your hands. And you need to be wearing some sort of um, protective eyewear that's going to have some side shields as well as a lot of coverage to your eyes to prevent any splashes from getting to your eyes. So this electrolyte analyzer is essentially on all the time. So anytime it's plugged in, it's turned on. However, when it's sitting there not being used, it goes into a standby mode. So to get it out of standby mode, you have to run calibration. So simply hit the yes or no buttons on the screen until you see the option to calibrate and then hit yes. So this is gonna take a, a minute or two to do the calibration. It's gonna run a couple of different calibration standards that are within the electrolyte module within the machine itself. So once it's done calibrating, it's gonna bring up the option to analyze a blood sample. Before you analyze a blood sample, if the machine hasn't been tested for quality control recently, um, you're probably gonna to wanna to run a quality control. So it really should be run every day or at the very least every week. So if it hasn't been run, go through the, the selection of options it shows you on the screen using the yes or no buttons. And essentially you're gonna get into the second screen. So hit no until you see second screen, hit yes on second screen, and then go to um, hit no until it gets to quality control. So you're gonna have to run three different quality controls. You're gonna have to run a normal quality control first, then you're gonna have to run a abnormally high quality control, and then an abnormally low quality control. The quality control samples are inside the refrigerator near the analyzer because they have to be refrigerated when not in use. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the quality control samples out um, and whichever one it's asking for at the moment. So it's going to, again, it's going to start with the normal quality control and then you're going to take the eyedropper, take the lid off and put a somewhere between three and five drops inside of a little sample cup that can be used in the analyzer. You're going to put the probe inside that sample, so put it all the way to the bottom, being gentle, don't bend the probe, but put it all the way to the bottom, because if you get any air inside that sample, it's going to give you an error and you're going to have to start this process again. So get it all the way into the bottom and then hit yes on the machine, telling it that the probe is inside the, the solution and that it can start to aspirate, which means to suck up the sample. All right, so it's going to suck up the sample and then it's going to beep at you. When it beeps at you, you take the, um, the sample away. So you take a Kim wipe or some other sort of soft tissue that's not going to give dust to the, the probe or on, into the sample, and you gently grip the probe, very, very gently, just enough to make sure that there's contact between the tissue and the probe. So by holding that Kim wipe gently against the probe, when the machine pulls the probe back into the machine itself, it's going to, going to be wiping the probe off. That's going to keep it clean or prevent it from having issues later on down the road. So anytime you run a sample, you really should have a Kim wipe against the probe as it's pulling the probe back inside. After that, it's just a matter of waiting and hoping that the machine is going to spit out numbers that are within the quality control range for the quality controls you have. So you're going to open up the uh, piece of paper that's inside the quality controls look for the appropriate analyzer type. So this is the sodium, potassium, and chloride analyzer. And you're going to look uh, within the appropriate um, type of quality control. So either the normal, the abnormal high, or the abnormal low, whichever one you're running at the moment. And so then you're going, you're going to check each the sodium, the potassium, and the chloride, and make sure that the numbers that the machine is giving you for that sample are within the acceptable range for that sample. All right, so if it is within the acceptable range, you're just gonna hit yes, and it's gonna ask you if you wanna store that, and you're gonna hit yes again, 
and then you're gonna go back to the process and do this again for the next quality control. So essentially when it asks you if you wanna run a normal sample quality control, you say no, and then it's gonna ask you if you, wanna run, if you want to run the abnormal high, and then you say yes, you do that sample, and then you go back again and to the quality controls, that's gonna ask you if you wanna run a normal, you say no, it's gonna ask you if you want a normal, oh, abnormal high, you say no, and then it's going to ask you if you want to run the abnormal low, and you say yes. So you do that three different times to run each of those uh, levels of quality control. So once the calibration and the quality control has been successful, it's going to ask you if you want to analyze a blood sample. So when it says a blood sample, it could mean whole blood if that is fresh. So if you have a whole blood fresh sample, you can run that just like that. You don't necessarily have to spin it down. You can run a serum or a plasma sample. So any of those three that you are gonna run is gonna give you fairly similar numbers. Just make sure that the whole blood sample is very fresh and there isn't a, a high likelihood of hemolysis. Um, you wanna essentially test the plasma within that sample so you don't want a bunch of bursted red blood cells. So I recommend not doing whole blood just because of that chance for hemolysis. I recommend doing either serum or plasma, so spinning that sample down and running the um, running the electrolyte analyzer with either the pure serum or pure plasma without the red blood cells in the sample. So running a blood sample is very similar to running a quality control sample. So when the screen says analyze blood, you're going to hit yes. The next thing it's going to ask is if you want to put in a um, subject number or a patient ID number, just hit no. Otherwise, it's a really long process that's kind of unnecessary. And you're going to be recording the numbers externally in a computer or on a piece of paper anyways. So just hit no to that. And then it's going to allow the probe down uh, to be ejected from the machine. So once that probe is ejected from the machine, you take your sample and you put it so the, um, the probe is all the way into the sample. Um, towards the bottom of the sample, hopefully. Again, you don't want to get any air inside that probe when it's sucking up the sample because it'll give you an error. So get it all the way in there, hit yes that the probe is within the sample, and it's going to suck a small amount of that sample up, and then it's going to beep at you. That means pull the sample away, get your chem wipe or other tissue ready, and apply it very, very gently to the probe so that when it pulls the probe through your fingers, it's gonna be cleaning off the probe in the process. And then it's just a matter of waiting a short period of time. It usually takes 30 seconds to a minute or so to get a measurement, and it's gonna spit out the measurement on the screen of the device. If you have paper in the, in the printer of the device, it's also gonna print off those uh, sample readings. So once you're completely done using the, the electrolyte analyzer for the day, uh, you're going to do a, the cleaning procedure. So if you go back into the refrigerator where the quality controls were, there should be a little bottle with a gray top. That is the cleaning solution. That's something that if you run out, you just mix it up yourself. You, you should be able to find a bottle of cleaning solution um, dilutant as well as those little bottles that I just mentioned but with just powder inside them. So if you already have the solution made up, you're just going to take the cap off the bottle and get it into the daily cleaner mode and hit yes. It's going to put the probe outside of the machine again. You're gonna put it all the way into the daily cleaner. You're gonna hit yes telling it it is inside the daily cleaner. It's gonna suck some of that up and then it's gonna pull the probe back. Then it's gonna go through a process of running that cleaner through the machine, making sure that everything is clear and that there's no old samples left inside the tubing of the machine. And when it's done, it's going to go into standby mode. And that's how you should leave the device whenever you are not using it anymore. So after you finish cleaning the device, the inside workings of the device, make sure you take some sort of cleaning wipe or alcohol pad, clean the outside of the device, clean the surfaces you've been using. Hope that was uh, relatively easy for you. It is a little bit more complex than some other devices to use, but it gives a really interesting um, data on electrolytes. So this can also be used for uh, urine electrolytes, but that's going to be a separate video at another time. So hope that was helpful. Please leave any comments or questions you have down below, and I'll try to answer those questions you have as quickly as I can. And please come back and watch another video.